Today, I wanna to walk you through how to work out a Punnett square problem. I'm going to start by explaining everything that you need to know to understand a Punnett square, and then we're going to actually go through the steps together, and I'm gonna give it an illustrated version so you can see and understand it better. This is something that you're probably learning about as a student in your genetics and heredity unit. So let's talk about what is heredity. Heredity is the passing of traits from parents to offspring. And we get a set of instructions from our mom and our dad that are passed down in our DNA that tell our body everything that we need to know about ourselves. We get a set of instructions from each parent for literally every characteristic about you. So if we look at our eye color, our height, whether we have freckles, our eyebrows, our ears, every single thing has two sets of instructions in our DNA. However, only one of those is going to show up in your physical appearance. And we're gonna talk about, well, how do we figure out which one actually did show up in our appearance? And what happens to that other set of instructions? Where did it go? The first thing that we need to talk about is a genotype. Like I said, you have two sets of instructions for everything about you. We have one set of instructions from one parent and one set of instructions from the other parent. And these two inherited alleles together form your genotype. So this is that coding in your DNA that says what was passed down from your mom and your dad for that characteristic, like height. Now the phenotype, and I always tell my students, you can help differentiate. Genotypes are the two genes, and the phenotype is more about your physical appearance, and they've both got that beginning f sound. Phenotype, physical appearance. An organism's physical appearance for a given characteristic. Like, we can say, okay, what's your phenotype for your eye color? So, hopefully you know your eye color. My eye color is hazel. You can see that we've got green, brown, blue. So whatever you end up actually having show up in your physical appearance, that's what your phenotype is. Now, here's where we have to start to figure out, well, how does that happen? How do we have two sets of instructions for everything? What if they're different? How do we know which one's going to win? Well, we have dominant traits and dominant, if you think about that word, you know, uh, let's say that you dominate someone in a basketball game or on a video game. You won, right? You totally beat them. So dominant traits win out over recessive traits, which we'll talk about next. Dominant traits are an inherited trait that results from the expression of the dominant one over the recessive one. Let's look at eye color. Dominant traits are the ones that win out. And we know that brown eyes are very common. Brown eye color is a dominant trait. And brown eye color is going to win out over blue eye color all the time because it dominates. Blue eye color is a recessive trait. And we're gonna talk about why it doesn't show up in people's physical appearance as often. But if you look around the room, or you think about just people in general, things that you see less often in society, like blue eyes, uh, blonde hair, red hair, those types of things are recessive. And we know that they're recessive because we can already see they don't show up as often, they don't win as often. So next we've got our recessive traits. Our recessive traits, they're genes that can be masked by those dominant traits and genes meaning they might be in your DNA, but they might not show up in your physical appearance. And the only way it can be expressed is when you have two recessive alleles, meaning that both your mom and your dad gave you those two recessive alleles and passed them down, like two sets of instructions for blue eyes or two sets of instructions for blonde hair. That's the only way we're gonna end up having those recessive traits. But if a dominant trait is included in those two sets of instructions, the dominant trait will always win, and then the recessive one will just be in your DNA. Next, let's talk about types of genotypes. 
So everyone has a genotype, meaning two genes that make up their DNA and those sets of instructions for everything about you. When we describe genotypes, we're gonna describe them as either homozygous, meaning it's a genotype with two dominant or two recessive alleles. So if we say homozygous, it has to also be followed with dominant or recessive, because they're either gonna be both dominant or they're gonna be both recessive, and we need to know the difference, because that is a big difference. Then they'll look like this. Homozygous dominant is two capital R's, and uppercase letters represent dominant traits, because think about it, uppercase, they're bigger, they went out. Lowercase letters are going to be our recessive traits. And this lowercase r, lowercase r is homozygous recessive. They're both the same and they're both recessive. Then we've got heterozygous. That's a genotype where we've got one dominant and one recessive allele. So we might have a dominant trait for brown hair color and a recessive trait for blonde hair color, and that person got one of each. So when somebody says heterozygous, we automatically know there's one dominant and there's one recessive because they're different. So every single time you hear heterozygous, it's going to be that way, one dominant, one recessive. All right, so here's the thing about Punnett squares and where students often get confused because we have to keep in mind that your parents each had a set of instructions for everything about them, which means there's a total of four sets of instructions, but you can only get two and you can only get one from each parent. So they're only going to pass down one of those genes. And there's a lot of different possibilities of ways those genes can combine and be passed down to you. And that's where a Punnett square comes into play. And that's what we're gonna use to predict, well, how could all of those four genes combine and what is the likelihood that this kid will be born with certain characteristics? And a Punnett square is used to organize all the possible combinations of offspring from particular parents. And it's going to show us, well, when we look at all the different options for how those four genes can combine, this is the likelihood of what the outcome will be. All right, so let's actually look at this Punnett square problem, and I'm going to walk you through some of the steps. I wanna explain the Punnett square itself and all of the different ways you're gonna walk through the problem, and then I'm going to give you some practice problems we'll work through together. So we've got our dominant trait, and we're always going to have it as an uppercase letter. That could be you know, for anything, eye color, hair color, but uppercase letters, they're gonna be the dominant ones, and we know that dominant ones went out over recessive ones, which are the lowercase letter. So you can see on the Punnett square, we have mom's two genes on the left side. She's got two genes for hair color she could pass down, and so does dad. So that's where we put them on the Punnett square. And notice that they're outside of the box. Students often try to write them on the inside of the box, but the inside of the box is the four possibilities of children and the characteristics that those kids would have. So we don't wanna put them in there. And then now you see up top, dad's got his two genes. So in this one, mom is heterozygous. She's got a dominant capital A and a lowercase a, a recessive trait. So that was the genotype she has and the two genes. Dad is homozygous dominant. He has two capital A's. So two dominant genes. Now the question is, how do we try to figure out what are the four possible combinations? Well, they can only combine in four different ways. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to take whatever is here, you can see I, with the arrows, I'm moving those two genes to this first square. And that is what the child would have in that combination then we're gonna do the exact same. And one thing to be careful about is look how I'm bringing the uppercase A directly over to this square from mom's genes. And then I'm also bringing the uppercase A down from dad's genes. And that is giving us this outcome. So each time we're doing that in the square, we're looking directly to the left and directly above. And we're filling it in as we go. So these are now the four genotypes that this child might have given these parents different genes. Now, one thing that students often ask 
is, does it matter if I write lowercase a, uppercase a, or what if I write it, you know, uppercase a, lowercase a? We're going to find out as we work through these problems, it doesn't really impact anything because dominant traits always win out. It doesn't matter if they're first or second. We're going to look at that square and say, well, because there's a dominant trait, this child is going to end up having the dominant trait. And we know the recessive trait is not going to win out. So let me walk you through an actual problem where it might make a little more sense. All right. Once we fill in that Punnett square with the genotypes, we're going to have to determine the phenotypes, which means what would the kid look like? What would they have show up in their physical appearance? If a dominant trait is in the square, the dominant gene will show up in the phenotype, the kid's physical appearance. And the only way a recessive trait shows up in the phenotype is if there are two recessive traits. We can look over here to the right and we can see that in the first square, there's two dominant traits, so the dominant phenotype will win out. The same thing is true in the second square and the third, because in the third, we do have one recessive gene, but it's not going to show up in the physical appearance because the dominant one is going to override it. And that's also true in the fourth square. So in this scenario, all four squares, which are all four different ways the genes can combine, gave us the same outcome. That child is going to have the dominant phenotype 100% of the time, meaning that's what's going to happen. And 0% of the time, they're going to have the recessive phenotype. So that's the probability. It means what's the likelihood for these two parents that their child will have this given characteristic. And then this one, it's 100% chance that they're going to have the dominant trait and 0% chance they're going to have the recessive trait. So we know what's going to happen here. And another shortcut is that each square represents 25% because 100% divided by four, there's four squares, each one is 25%. So we can add those up and we know that four you know, times 25 is gonna be 100%. So that was pretty easy for this example. The next thing is the ratio. A ratio is telling us the relation of the numbers and the outcome. And the way we write it is four to zero in this example, because in both, in all four squares, they were dominant. And then in zero squares was the outcome recessive. So we're writing the ratio dominant colon to recessive, meaning how many dominant squares and then how many recessive outcomes did we have? All right, so here's a problem, and I want you to stop and try to ask yourself if you can work through these steps and go along with me. It says in this practice problem, brown hair is dominant to red hair. That is true, first of all. Dad is heterozygous. Mom is homozygous recessive. Use the letter H for hair color to fill in the Punnett square. All right, the first thing that we want to do, we always want to define, well, what's dominant and what's recessive? Now, I always tell my students, never skip this step, even if you're working it out on paper. Capital H is going to be brown hair. They said that brown hair is dominant to red hair. So red hair is lowercase h. Now we've got to figure out, well, what are mom and dad's genotypes? It says dad is heterozygous, which means dad has one dominant trait, which is capital H for brown hair. And he's also got red hair and that allele. So he's got a lowercase h. So we've written his in. Now, mom is homozygous recessive, meaning she has two sets of instructions for red hair, both lowercase h's. So those are the four genes that they can pass down to the child. So in the first square, we're going to bring those two down and we're going to continue to do that around the square. These are the four options that the kids could have. Now, if we look at the first square, you can see that the phenotype is brown hair. And we know that when there's a dominant trait, it's going to win out over the recessive trait. Now look at the second square to the right and tell me, what is the phenotype going to be there? Is it going to be brown hair or is it going to be red hair? If you guessed red hair, you were correct because the only way we can have red hair, that recessive trait, 
is if both sets of instructions are for red hair, and they are, they're both recessive and lowercase. We see that in the third square. And then in the fourth square, we've got brown hair again, because there's that dominant trait. Now, the probability. So the question is, what's the percent chance that the kid will be born with brown hair? And then what's the percent chance that they'll be born with red hair? Well, half of the squares are brown and half of them are red. So it's just like flipping a coin. It's 50-50, 50% chance for brown hair and a 50% chance for red hair. And then on our ratio, we have two outcomes with brown hair, the dominant trait, and two with the recessive trait. So our ratio would be two to two, brown hair to red hair or dominant to recessive. Let's move on to one more practice problem just to make sure that we can work through all of the steps. The, the problem says brown eyes are dominant to blue eyes. Mom is heterozygous and dad is also heterozygous. And we know that that means they have one of each set of instructions, one dominant, one recessive. Fill in the Punnett square using the letter capital E for dominant and lowercase e for recessive traits. So we're gonna start by defining our dominant trait, which is capital E equals brown eyes. And our recessive trait is lowercase e equals blue eyes. Then we're gonna say mom's heterozygous. So we know that she has one dominant and one recessive trait. She has a set of instructions for brown and blue eyes. And so does dad. So now that we have their four genes on the Punnett square, we need to figure out, well, how do we fill in the Punnett square? So remember, we're gonna bring our genes from one from mom, one from dad, and we're gonna move around the Punnett square as we do that. Now, if you get confused as to where those letters come from, remember, you can go back a couple of slides or in the video and you can see the animations exactly how I'm getting each one into the box. Now in the first square, that child would have two dominant genes, two sets of instruction for brown eyes. So we know they're gonna end up with brown eyes. Now, I want you to ask yourself in the second square to the right, what would the phenotype be for that child? We have capital E, one dominant trait, and lowercase e, one recessive trait. If you said brown eyes, you're correct. Because even though we have a set of instruction for blue, we know that the only way blue eyes will show up is if it's both sets of instructions, like in the next square. Two recessive traits means we're gonna get recessive, which is blue eyes. And then in the last one, again, it's brown eyes. Now, what's the probability for this scenario? What are the outcomes that we're looking at? When we look down there, we see that in three squares, we're gonna end up with the dominant trait, which is brown eyes. And then in one of those outcomes, we're gonna have blue eyes. So if each square represents 25% probability, then we know that there's a 75% chance that the child will end up with brown eyes and a 25% chance they'll end up with blue eyes. Now, the ratio is how many dominant outcomes to how many recessive. And in that one, we know it's three to one, brown eyes to blue eyes, dominant to recessive. Okay. so. There's a lot of steps in this, and I know that it can be overwhelming to students at times, but I have some practice problems on Teachers Pay Teachers. You can go back and rewatch this video and revisit the steps and just ask yourself if you can do each step in the problem and make sure that you understand what each term means because we've gotta know what dominant, recessive, heterozygous, and homozygous mean, because if you don't know that, it's gonna be really hard to work through the problem. And then you can also go back and look at the animations where I show you exactly how we fill in the Punnett square. But if you'd like more practice, teachers, I have a set of practice problems that students can complete that are just like this, and it will grade itself in Google Forms. And that is in my Teachers Pay Teacher store. If you have questions as a student, or if there's something that didn't make sense to you, ask those below and I will comment and answer whatever questions I can. And until next time, happy teaching and I'll see you guys in the classroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know how you're liking my videos.